So finally, in order to try a first, have a first sense of the complexity of real applications, we have selected the LULSMK example. And we propose just to produce the OpenACC version because we have seen that OpenACC typically produces a bit faster code at OpenMP for the same purpose. So to simplify, let's use OpenACC as a reference for this more realistic code example. Lulesh, electrodynamic applications from physics, in the end, it's all about the same. Let's locate the profiling, which is the hotspot function. Here you can see the code consists of more than 11 functions, not one single one. And you have at least four functions that consume more than 10% of the runtime. So eventually, or potentially, you will like, you will want to optimize the performance of these four functions. Again, you need to know how to verify correctness. There was a question about this yesterday. In P, in Pi, it's simple, just one floating point number. In matrix matrix multiplication, let's compare element by element and see that the error is not greater than a given threshold. But real applications, typically measuring correctness is not that simple. And it's, it requires knowledge about the scientific domain and producing by the scientists and the computational scientists some uh, figures of merit or some metrics that we can use to verify that the code is correct, okay? So verifying correctness is not easy, but here in Lulesh, we just need to check that it is producing typically this same output that we can see here. Uh, we have seen this. So essentially what we propose you from the real application, one file, 15 functions, almost 20 loops, 500 lines of code, something a bit bigger than four lines of code in one single loop in one function in the Pi example. So here you will also be addressing the complexity of real applications. You have a loop that calls other functions. And also it is not a straightforward massively parallel computation like Pi or math matrix, matrix multiplication. Here we have something that we call the sparse reductions, but in the end, it's a type of computation that appears if you are using molecular dynamics, if you're using finite elements, finite differences, uh, particle methods, you will find this kind of uh, computation in the code. That is having indirections on an array, that is a reduction array, and you need to protect those indirections from introducing race conditions and runtime. This is what we call sparse reductions. You have more extensive documentation about these compute patterns that are at the heart of, of CODI in previous uh, uh, materials published in, in NERS website. We can point you to those materials if you are interested, but it should be enough to use get the current capabilities of CODI. It should not be necessary for you to dig into the theory or the, or the rationale behind these computation patterns. And starting from this, let's follow the same path. Report evaluation, enable TPU and multi-threading, focus on the loops, particularly in the low hanging fruit, low difficulty loops, actions, level two actions. You can see here these sparse computation patterns that are highlighted here. And finally, just follow the instructions. Open directives will produce the code. You will see that the sparse reductions have been optimized for parallel execution, protecting with atomic instructions the the indirections to avoid race conditions. And also you will see that CODE produces incomplete OpenACC code. This is helping you to really know how to fill in some information that not, may not be available through a static code analysis, okay? In particular, you will need to fill in uh, some data. Uh, the data is pointed out here. So here you have the template that is produced, these brackets, columns brackets. If you try to compile this OpenSC application, the OpenSC compiler will report an error. This is intentional so that you know exactly where the error is and you can fix it just by introducing the array shape. LULSMK is using only one D array. So it should be fairly easy, just the maximum size of the uh, vectors. These are one D vectors. Once you introduce that information, make those changes, you will see how MVC, if you enable minus capital M info flag, you will see all the information reported by the compiler, how it used this information 
to implement the data transfers and to actually manage the complexity of the function calls through implicit OpenACC routine sequential to annotate the functions. And this is done automatically by the NVIDIA compiler. Finally, these are the numbers and this is what you get. So here we are seeing that the code runs correctly on the GPU. We have the first starting version for uh, the GPU. At, and as usually uh, in the first versions running on GPU, it doesn't run faster. It runs more or less with the same performance or a bit slower. Because remember, for real applications, it's not enough to handle this. You will need to address additional GPU challenges that we will see in the more advanced courses. Okay, so we expect this Lulis MK example to be further optimized in the upcoming course in September and October. So this is the, the, the typical situation you, you will see in when starting on the GPU with real applications. Okay, and finally, just the typical remarks. Remember to load the module, dash dash help is your friend, code command line tools, run the scripts in the appropriate reservations, and to understand the issues, please, review, read, go through the knowledge base. A lot of information illustrated by example is there. And that's it. That's what I wanted or we wanted to cover right after the break in just uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Any questions or any remarks, uh, Helen, about the, the this sample code and what comes next? Free hands-on for the people to play with Lulis MK, finish the previous labs, or why not try to start with their own application? Yeah, uh, free hands-on time, uh, mostly to work on this Lulis code, uh, not just blindly apply those directives, but look into the code to see what it has done to the code. And then if you wanna um, work on your own code, that's also a good opportunity because the developers are here to answer your questions. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, check out the q and I like one of the questions yesterday. It was um, answered today. What does this um, code is unique? I think I like this code, just my, my opinion. Um, first of all, it helps novice um, programmers to, to just insert all these directives for you. This is a big help. Uh, on other, one of the other tools I know about is the uh, Cray review tool. That one has, you have to use a uh, Cray compiler only. And then of course, after the general, you can use any other compiler uh, after that. Um, but for the Kodi tool, uh, you can just run it on a logging node. With, I think um, in backend it does GCC and the static code analysis, but it's, it's, it's simpler so that you already get the, the directives inserted for your code. The, the other advantage of this tool is that it has lots of knowledge base and recommendations of performance with uh, optimization suggestions. So take good advantage of these. I think that's a, also a big plus. I hope um, our attendees get learn something and uh, apply this tool. And thank you very much for the uh, training for us, the Pantra team. Um, the tool is now called Cody. The company is a Pantra. <laughs> Oh, it's uh, rebranding. So if you have used this before, it was a PW analyzer tool. Yep. I think. And I, I, I appreciate all the users attending um, the training and maybe spread the knowledge to your colleagues and friends. And thank you for NERSC and Oak Ridge um, users and organizers. Suzanne and Ruben here today. Yes.